How you doing everybody in social media land? My name is GoGoLS86. Uh, the young Aboriginal AB the legend asked me to do this video talking about the Aboriginal history of Haiti. So I'm like, you know what? Why not? I'll do it. It's something I feel more of us need to talk about. And the more we talk about it, the more we'll find out. Because right now everyone's too scary to talk about shit. But fuck it, the information's out there anyway, so why can't we talk about it? All right. I'll start at the very top because especially if you're black, they want to separate you from the original history of the island. And the thing about Haiti is, it's always, from the, from the start, it's always been kind of a thorn in the European power's side. It's always started that way, it's like that now, that's why it's being financially crippled. See, when Columbus got to Haiti, that's when basically everything popped off. They got to, they got to the island and they saw everything was was fruitful everything they had vegetation they had lots of people they had a lot of resources that the Spanish felt that they could use so they immediately set up to like conquer and enslave the people of the island now they want to tell you all the time that these people were peaceful that these people were soft while these people were kind people in their hearts they were peaceful people they also had they had a warlike side to them not there's no people on this planet that's all nice and goody-goody. If you push someone far enough, they're always gonna fight back. So, but let me push it back further than that. I'm gonna reference um, the Atlantic Journal and Friend of Knowledge by C.S. Rafaniske, where he talks about the Caracol of Haiti, which was one of two Aboriginal groups. In that book, he references the Caracol of Haiti as Negro Aboriginal types, black. Um, or also beast, men, beast of men, or however he pronounced it. And another book, The Annals of Haiti, he goes into further detail by the same author, C.S. Rafaniske, The Annals of Haiti, he goes into further detail about the Caracol. The Caracol were a group of Asiatic black people who had moved to the island and set up shop there. They had started a society like all people do, but what happened is they started taking on wives of other nations. That's why they referred to them as beasts because these people had standards. You couldn't just take a woman of another nation and your people not say nothing. Which is like today, you know, where, you know, both brothers and sisters do the same thing. They take women and men of other nations. I ain't got nothing against that. But a lot of times they like to turn around and use that as an excuse to talk shit about where they came from. That isn't cool either. But that's beyond the point. The Caracol did so much mixing that their kids became the working class of the island. Once again, the um, book is called The Annals of Haiti. Do not take my word for it. Look it up for yourself. Um, they did so much missing that the kids became the working class, the former class of this island. Uh, and when the Spanish came over, this is where the people were, this is who the Spanish were, were dealing with more mainly. Um, the Spanish came over and they immediately set about raping, pillaging, and killing. Um, they started with the colony that Columbus left behind, La Navidad, but that settlement was burned down. There's different accounts as to why, but I just think maybe the Spaniards couldn't keep their hands to themselves and probably couldn't act right, and the people got pissed off and got rid of them. That's how it goes sometimes. Um, but anyways, after the settlement of La Navidad, they still went about enslaving, raping, pillaging, all the bad habits that they had in Europe, they were bringing over to the Americas. When they were going through raping and pillaging, many of the leaders, many of the indigenous leaders would not tolerate it. They like, once again, they like to say these people were peaceful and nice and they killed themselves rather than to deal with the Spanish. This was not true. These people were extremely rebellious, rebellious, as with the case of one of the first rebellions out there, the rebellion of Hatuwe. The rebellion of Hatuwe started in Haiti. Hatuwe was a cacique who was in one of the regions of Haiti who was attacked by the Spanish. They did so much killing and raping that Hatuwe set out a campaign of guerrilla warfare and started fighting the Spanish. He was pushed out of Haiti, so he grabbed as many as he could and left to Cuba. When he got to Cuba, he immediately set about talking to the people there. He, he gave them a warning. He told them what was coming. He told them they cared for nothing but the same shit they care about now, gold, money, and they don't really care about human life. A few fought with Hatuwe, but many didn't and 
they felt the oppression under the, the Spanish, just like pretty much everyone else. Uh, Hatsue fought the best he could. He took down many Spanish, but he was eventually captured. One of the uh, more memorable stories told by De La Casas, you can look up this story just about anywhere. Look up the story of Hatsue, especially if you're Haitian. This is your history, so you should actively be reading it. Don't let people try to separate you from the history talking about some Oh, you're African, that history has nothing. No, it's all your history. One of the historical accounts set aside by De Las Casas was when they attempted to baptize Hatsue. They captured Hatsue, and a priest came to Hatsue, and he told him, Hatsue, you're a sinner. You must repent. Hatsue didn't understand this because their concept of religion was very different than our concepts of religion today. Um, he explained to he explained to Hatsue that if he died without becoming baptized, he would burn in the fires of hell for all of eternity. And Hatsue asked them, "What are the Spanish? Where do the Spanish go when they die?" The priest told Hatsue, "Well, if they are baptized, they go to heaven, like all good Christians." And Hatsue looked at the priest and said, "Then don't baptize me. I don't want to go anywhere the Spanish go. They are horrible people." I'd rather go to hell. This is this marks the end of Hatsue's journey as he was burned at the stake for heresy. How fighting for your right to be free is heresy, I'll never know. But people will also always justify the evil things they do. That's just the world that we've been living in currently. The world we've been living in currently. Next, we have the next the next story we have is the story of Anna Kanoa. Anna Kanoa was a princess of Haiti more of a queen. She was a queen of Haiti. Her, her brother was royal lineage and her husband was royal lineage. They had attempted a, a coup on the Spanish, but they failed and they were killed. So she attempted to do the more peaceful, peaceable thing by negotiating with the Spanish to preserve the life of her people. The Spanish being duplicitous only saw ways to gain and also ways to fulfill their lust, but she wasn't having it. So they figured, all right, if we're gonna get if we're gonna get this Anna Canoa chick, we're gonna have to set her up. So what the Spanish did was, at a ceremonial di um, dinner with many of the caciques or chiefs of the island, they waited till everyone was in the bahio, bahui, or the house, the grass house, and they set the roof on fire. Many of the chiefs escaped, but many of them were burnt. Anna Canoa was the one, one of the ones who escaped. They arrested her and they charged all of them with conspiracy and heresy and um, attempt to overthrow the Spanish influence on the island, even, known, even though none of it was true. She was actually trying to work about more peaceful results with the Spanish. So they, on the day before she was hung, they, they gave her an offer. They told her, we'll forgive all the wrongdoings you've done against the, the crown of Spain if you relinquish all leadership to us and you take one of our men as a husband. She was severely insulted by this and she told him that she'd rather be hung and died than take on one of the Spanish as her husband and betray her people. And they did just that, they hung her. Now, these are two people, these are two peoples, two separate instances at the beginning of the conquest of Haiti that rebelled. Now you kind of understand why that rebellious spirit is always so, so fearfully quenched and, and quelled and stepped on in Haiti because it's not a one-time thing, it's something that continually happened. It's happened over and over again. And once again, this is why they cripple them economically and they cripple us economically and they keep a boot hill on our neck. But now is the time for us to learn and reread our history so we can learn where we went wrong as a people and we can make better decisions in the future to have better results. Another instance, after we'll call it the, um, we'll call it the Arawak Chronicles, what happened in the past, or the Taino Chronicles. After they enslaved pretty much everyone in Haiti, they sent about 2,000 slaves back to Spain. They were sending slaves back and forth from America to all over the place, to Africa, to Spain, to different parts of America. It was crazy. They rounded up a whole bunch of uh, indigenous slave, Arawak slaves, over in Central America, and they sent uh, and they shipped them over to Haiti to work. They also grabbed a great many slaves. Some say they cleared the island of Nassau of all the inhabitants to bring them to work in Haiti. They would have they would tell you that all these people died, but my question is, 
where are the mass graves for these people? You know, and a lot of these descriptions of these people, they look, they were described to be black a lot of the cases. A lot of people will argue that they weren't, but they were. It is what it is. A lot of times, these people were described as black. There were black people uh, witnessed in Haiti. So right off the bat, that tells you the regular history that you're given, you're lied to about, and that you are tied to these very lands. That's why they lied to you about it in the first place. But once again, do not take my word for it. Look up my references. Another great um, book to get into is of Cannibals and Kings, Primal Anthropology in the Americas. That's an excellent book. It has a great, uh, it has a great many articles on the history of Haiti and the indigenous history of Haiti. And one of the very ones I found very interesting was one on the zombie ceremony. Any Haitian can tell you what a zombie is. It's basically a re reanimated slave for a voodoo priest using herbs and different wildlife and different extracts and different botanical things to bring about certain processes in the body. Now, what I found interesting is that all my life I've been told from mostly non-Haitian sources, to be honest with you, and all some Haitian sources too, that it's actually an African procedure, but I've never really met any Africans who told me that. And also when I read in this book and of Cannibals and King, Primal, and Prim Primal Anthropology in the Americas, I read an account taken by the explorer Payne of his time in Haiti and with some Indians, non-African Indians in Haiti. And what they did was they, one of a family member of this indigenous family had died. And I guess it was, he was under the charge of one of their doctors to see that he lives due, due through diet and so on. And what they did was they took the body to one of their witch doctors to perform a procedure where the witch doctor mixed some herbs and some some oils together, uh, much of which was not said what it was in the book, but I have an idea what it was. But they mixed it all together, cut some of the hair off the head off the deceased corpse and mixed it together, and they blew the concoction inside of the dead body's nose. Once again, you can look this up for yourself. This is not something I'm making up. I gave you the book reference. And when they did this, the corpse started talking as if it was alive. According to Payne, their explorer, this is why it's important for people to read so they can see some of the other things these explorers claim that they saw. This is not stuff people are making up. Now, they blew this concoction in the nose of this corpse and the corpse started talking. And the corpse related to the family and the priest that the doctor that was in his charge did not prescribe him the proper diet and the proper medication. If this was done by the corpse, then the family would seek vengeance by basically stabbing the, the accused doctor in the genitals till they died. But this was an account in this book of, of Cannibals and Kings Primal Anthropology in the Americas. Look it up. Now, I'm going to go into more modern Haitian revolution stuff that more people are used to. And I'm gonna talk about some of the locations. One of the fellows to kick off the Haitian Revolution, his name was Duty Bookman. He was actually a Jamaican slave who was shipped to Haiti. Um, he was a well-read slave. He was one of those slaves who knew how to read. That's why they couldn't keep him on one island for so long. He would eventually, once you know how to read and once you know how to learn, it makes you unfit to work for anybody. It makes you unfit to be a slave. And he went to a priest one day, um, a Catholic priest, and he asked him, priest, why am I a slave? And the priest told him because God demanded so. That was one of the biggest mistakes the priest could make. Because Duty Bookman got a whole bunch of Haitians together and he went to what was called Boakaima. Boakaima, Kaima is a Haitian word. It's actually an indigenous Haitian word that means alligator. And it's what kicked off a lot of the Haitian revolution in Boakaima. Um, they got together a whole bunch of slaves, a whole bunch of free people of color, a whole bunch of different types of colored people got together in Boakaima and they made a blood pact that they would fight for their freedom. And <laughs> they lived it through. Bookman, Bookman's claim to fame was he was poisoning the water a lot of the French were drinking from and he warned the slaves. But as with any revolution, you're always gonna have people who are going to sell you out. So, <laughs> so it's best to keep stuff like that under wraps. I'm not encouraging anyone go out and poison no one so they could be like, oh yeah, Gogo LS told us to go poison people. Nah, I'm just saying, 
if you have a plan to make an advancement for yourself any type of way, try to keep it under wraps for yourself. But anyways, Duty Bookman poisoned the water and killed many, but he was eventually caught because he was snitched on and they made an example of him by cutting off his head and parading it through the town square. A lot of this history is brutal, but people are gonna have to learn how to have a stronger stomach these days. But anyways, um, they killed Duty Bookman, but this didn't quell the thirst for freedom in Haiti because too many people were tired of working all the time. And the spirit to be free is just strong among black people in general. We just can't be held down for too long. What happened next was Toussaint L'Overture took up the mantle. Toussaint had a better upbringing than most black people in Haiti. Toussaint was well spoken, he was well read. A lot of these people will try to make you think a lot of these Haitian revolutionaries were all slaves. A lot of them were very well educated, very well off people. They just didn't tolerate slavery because it was happening to their people. Um, Toussaint L'Overture was one such person. He was actually raised among whites. So he had a softer spot for whites than a lot of the other revolutionaries did. Um, and that eventually led to his downfall, where he saw that the island of Saint Domingo, Haiti, could be a hub for all types of people to live together and trade and build something really special. The French just didn't see it that way. And while he was fighting them for his freedom, his military tactics were impeccable they had to resort to deceit to capture him. They actually captured him under the pretext of him going to a peace treaty talk and it was gonna be no arms there or nothing and he fell for it. He went there and they captured him and they basically threw him in a dungeon in France until he died. Now, this is one of the case of France killing the devil they know for the devil they don't. Who came after Toussaint was a fellow by the name of Jean-Jacques Dessalines. Jean-Jacques Dessalines was the opposite. Where Toussaint L'Overture was Martin Luther King, Jean-Jacques Dessalines was Malcolm X's core. There's always that dichotomy in most black people's history. I don't know why, it just happened that way. But Jean-Jacques Dessalines was a gruff man, he was a tough man, he was not a docile man. He had tasted the slings of slavery in his youth and actually worked his way into freedom. So when he got the reins of leadership after Toussaint L'Overture, he was convinced that France would not let go of the island unless they had absolutely no interest on the island. So upon, upon coming to this realization, he made all Haitians take a pact, whether you're mixed, whether you're black, to basically rid the island of all white people. And this is not just something he did because he didn't like white people. It was a very bloody, a very drawn out, a very cruel history between the two people. There was a lot of death. There was a lot of death of a lot of black people before he said, let's kill all white people. It's not something he just came up with. I know how people like to paint that picture, but that's what he did. And it was a very hard thing for the people on the island, especially if they were mixed, because there was a lot of upper class mulatto people who had white mothers who had white fathers, who had white aunts and uncles who were asked to do such things. And that's a very hard thing. A lot of them couldn't do it. A lot of them helped their people leave to Louisiana and other places to escape the bloodshed. But a lot of people did do it. But either way, this mass killing was kind of Jean-Jacques Dessalines' way of bringing all these people together. Even though it doesn't work that way, blood always calls for blood. That's why blood should always be a last resort. I'll put it that way. Blood always calls for blood. And eventually, through uneasy power conflicts and uneasy power struggles, after he came to emperor rulership and defeated the French, he, he was betrayed by his, own, by his own lieutenants in the indigenous army. By the way, the Haitian army was called the indigenous army, not the African army, not the Haitian army, but the indigenous army. That tells you who they were. But he was then murdered and then power kind of switched hands in Haiti for a time back and forth. But that's as much as I'm willing to share on the history of Haiti. I'm only sharing this to encourage more people, especially African Americans. Your history is more covered up than anyone else's history. I'm encouraging you all to look into our... Our history was covered up, and you've seen how crazy that shit is. I'm curious to see what 
true African American history is. And I can't really look that up. While I'm black and technically I am African American, I'm not native born to North America. That's your job. And I personally want to hear that story. Thank you for letting me share and thank you for listening. Also, check me out on my Instagram, gogols86, and check out my art. I have art commissions for sale. I incorporate a lot of indigenous and worldwide history inside my art. It's something for everybody to enjoy in there. I make shoes, I make posters, I make whatever, hit me up. Also check out my um, camera woman's Instagram, Mother Nurture. She has excellent posts about health and food and she sells jewelry. Go ahead and say it yourself. Check out Mother's Nurture. <laughs> you mother, messed me mother, up. <laughs> mother Goose, check out Mother no, Goose. No, check out uh, Mother underscore, underscore Nurture 4. My Instagram, I have a um, herbal holistic shop, also jewelry making. Yeah, get right, get your health right, get your bling right. I mean, shit, might as well, look good. Sharon, thank you for listening, I'm out, peace.